today we're going to have a chat. We're going to have a chat about the 4B2 by 12 Scout Crafter challenge that we were set. Um, and I'm going to um, show you each and every part that I used mm, and how they came about and what are they and what are they there. Mm. And the helmets are really look, look very funny story. Anyway, uh, we'll start in the beginning. What was the yeah the front and there was well in the beginning there was the wood, so we had used wood, and I had to dig around and I found one in the rafters, didn't I? Knocking, knocking about, not in use. So this is was so luckily, the wood that we had was as specified, which is. Um, a four, well, not quite two, but a four by two, four by two, and then we measured 12, didn't we? And we found a bit without a knot in it. So um, then we had the general shape, and what I did, I, I, I drew it, but I didn't, I shortened this piece, the body. I should have drawn it taking in the top, but by the time I put the line in the wood and then sanded it down, this body is actually a smidge shorter from the one piece of wood to the other piece of wood, but because of the um, the, the ground clearance underneath, if you put the tape measure on the bottom, it looks four inches. So that became accidentally correct. <laughs> right, okay. So we got the wood, we cut the shape, blah, blah, blah. Now the holes, we made, let's see if we can do this in one big, one fell swoop. The holes we made with a hole. Hmm, I'm gonna have to start this film again, hold on. So I forgot to mention, we made the wheels. We dr drilled the holes out of plywood. And luckily it's seven plywood. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's a seven ply plywood uh, and we cut the wheels out, didn't we? So because there was seven, it made it very easy for me to trim the edge off and leave three in the middle. Took two out off of either side and that's how we created the wheel. We just followed the line of the ply on the sander, didn't we? So it made, because we'd made them out of ply, it made that making that shape a lot easier. Made it a lot easier. I just followed the, the the line of the ply. So there's two here we could shave down. We knew that one in the middle was the middle and two either side. And that's what got that wheel, that wheel shape. Mm. So I sort of accidentally fell across that, doing that there with the plywood. Mm. Yeah, let's carry on. <laughs> the holes. I used this to cut the holes. Well, I'd actually bought this to do, to mount the clocks, you know, the dials I've got. I was gonna cut these, use these to cut the dials out and put the clock dials in. So that, I didn't have them. And I bought them to do another job, which I haven't done yet, but it was great to turn the wheels, didn't it? We ha I can't show you any of the bearings because I only had eight and we've used eight. So um, we used some of this old thread, didn't we? We use the old thread that's up here and we've got plenty of it up there look we use the good supply of old thread uh we put nuts and washers at the end and we put the bearings on and uh we drew, we we turned it on its side and we drilled the holes and we just shoved them through initially these were sticking out a bit long so we just uh, all we did was cut them to the length and hammer over the ends just seems to do the trick so the we'll starting with these these were these were these I had in a jar I was just walking around as you do you sort of walking around looking for inspiration don't you and I had these these must be off some sort of a I don't know some sort of greenhouse or some sort of shelving or something and um, so nicely painted two of them there just drill a hole drill the hole slightly smaller so that when you knock them in they're insecure but there's not enough pressure to split the wood 
because I worry, was worried about splitting the wood. So we've had two in the front painted white as lights and we've had two in the back painted as brake lights. Hmm. Now these, we had these are, now that, see these holes here? Um, that was a nail, nail boiled until it was, um, you know, on the on the plumber's torch until it was red hot and melted it in. Went in really easy. That's how we did those. And then this, these were, these were those. I wanted cylinders. It had to be something around to represent eight cylinder engine. So it couldn't all be nuts and bolts, could it? So it had to be an Allen key. And um, we had a few of these. It's always worth keeping stupid bits of stuff knocking around always because you can just wander around and think of something so that's how they came about now this there was something lacking here there was something you know i had in my mind a go faster stripe but um however we'll come back to that however i didn't have a go faster stripe but I did have, and have got, hold on, do you recognise what it is? I have got a go faster split pin. <laughs> Same as the stripe, isn't it? <laughs> so, the two go faster stripes on the side are actually two go faster split pins. And I simply screwed them in with this little pot of little screws that I didn't have many of. So, they're in a little pot, you know. Yeah. Um, now the head, the head, now there's a bit of a story to the head. What have I done with that other piece? Hold on, we might have to go and get another one. Anyway, the head. Well, first of all, let me tell you the story of the helmet, where that came around. This, this is a duckling. Now, you know I'm a biker and you know I'm a trucker. So generally, I, d I run with quite a few people that aren't truckers, that, you know, don't travel the country, I haven't spent years and years travelling. So they're all my ducklings, they don't pass me. Not because I'm good and quick in the front, it's because they don't know where the hell they are. So I always get the job of being in front, or uh, they're all my little ducklings. Follow me, you little ducklings, you don't know where the hell you're going. They know their usual routes, but as a trucker of 35 years, y you have an instinct, you know where you're going. You know names of places, you know if that name is the right direction where you want to go. You, you go along, you find a signpost, you see a name, then you know in your head where that name is. And do we want it and don't we want it? Or will that be good enough? Or if we keep going, we'll find another name we recognise. So uh, the idea came that uh, if, you were, if you were on one of my runs, um, the idea came along you get a duckling on your bike and these fit great on handlebars and, and racks and stuff. So uh, if you have a look at the old Goldwing, um, not this new one now, the old Goldwing, you'll see um, they've got a duckling on them and you've got to look really careful. But when we go for a run out, you'll know which are my little ducklings because they're all, <laughs> all equipped with a duck. <laughs> And anyway, that's where the that's where the helmet came from. When you bought this, funny enough, you got two spare helmets, and the spare helmet happened to just fit that, so that was that had to go on, didn't it? So that just fitted right. And of course, we went looking for a bolt, and and this bolt fitted inside that helmet quite nicely. Now I did pull one out, but I don't know what I've done with it. Is it in my pockets? Hold on. Hold on, hold on. We'll go and get another. Okay, hold on. Let's go and get another. I know where they are. One, two, three, four. Yeah. So here, you see, we have these. So I wanted to, I wanted to make myself a baldy head. I was going to put Stig, but the Stig one didn't fit, and this one fitted so well. I had to make this. I had to work with this, didn't I? So we put the helmet in, and I wanted a baldy head. So what I did is I cut the head of this coach bolt and then, I won't say weld, I butchered it onto there and I got Debbie to paint it and remember we put a neck on it. A neck, 
again it was just just parts that you know you, you just put to one side you don't throw away you get these you think hmm they might come in handy one day well they came in that day to do a little neck for a little face to fit on scout grafters 4b2 sort of challenge <laughs> so that's why you should keep everything and then just use your imagination imagine what you're doing you know and it, and it comes to you it just comes to you and and the, this is a whole load of these. Where are they? A whole load of these. What are they? U-bolts in a jar. And they happen to just be the right size to fit over there. So that fit there. Lovely. We'll just check this out. This. This thing here. I don't know. I haven't called it. I just thought it would look nice there. And Debbie painted it. That is one of these. Again, just drill a hole slightly smaller than that so you can tap it in and it grips so it, it doesn't fall out you know don't need to glue it on a thing and just tap it in i don't know exactly what it is and what job it does all that i know is i've got some in a jar i haven't got so many in a jar i've mixed them so they're and i put two on a lid so i thought oh yeah that would that would do something nice on the back um, now these, I haven't really decided what we're going to do, what we're going to call these, what's the story we're going to make up, and what they are, what they are, are these, again, in a jar, I've had forever and a day, I don't know where they came from, I don't know what they are, I'm guessing, if I had to guess, they go into some sort of plastic moulding and you mould a plastic part around them. It's got a little thread. And initially I was going to put them that way. But I thought, no, well, you almost see them like an exhaust. It could almost be another exhaust, couldn't it? So we used that for there, didn't we? And tapped them in. Again, drilled a hole, tapped them in, made them look sort of nice. And we we are a bit of a fan of Max Watson Car Wow. He's a car car um, uh, reviewer, really good car reviewer. We actually we've had a few cars through Car Wow. If you've never seen it, what happens is this Car Wow. Um, you, you if you're buying like Debbie's car was a bog standard, you know um, that that raid that car. Uh, nothing added it wasn't factory built or nothing so you can go to car so you can go to your main dealer and he's going to charge you x amount now i think the, that one was about 19 some or whatever it was so we put the thing in car wow it went to all the car wow dealers and somebody from up north said which was a joint ben bona fide peugeot dealer said we, we can get you that for 16 or whatever it was so then we approached our local garage and said uh, look and showed them look this is the offer on car wow can you match it so then we had what we wanted at the price the best price somebody could offer us but at our local dealer anyway so matt watson car wow he does he a bit like me he's not too serious a reviewer put a bit of fun in it and he uses the stick of truth so that's what gave me the idea i Stuck that in first and then just basically drilled a hole in as far as I could get the drill to go. So that's what gave me the idea of the the Q-tip, the ear plug um, of truth. <laughs> so that's where that idea came from. <laughs> and yeah, so I'm really, really, and I've thoroughly, absolutely, oh, and then petrol. We, um, the petrol, here's the nail that I warmed up, look. The coffee and the petrol, I've used it before. Now, you would think that coffee would would melt, wouldn't you? You know, would dissolve in the liquid. It ain't dissolving. And I, I will make another video. I heated it up. I used the um, the heater. Not, I was going to put it on fire, but I know there's petrol in there. But I used the uh, the blow lamp, the warm, warm air blow lamp. And it, and it does sort of soften it up and make it move. So... And that's where I got the coffee and the petrol. A long, long time ago, I bought a cheap pot of coffee for about three quid or something out the car boot and just mix it with petrol. 
and it gives you this. It, this time it came out a bit lumpy. It doesn't usually. Usually it sort of comes... Well, I expected it to come a lot darker than that, actually. And, and if you look at the end grain, it is quite dark when you put it on the end grain. So it didn't really... Hmm. But it was okay. Did the job. So anyway, and of course, yeah, we used that um, bolt and we painted a little ball patch on there, didn't we? So I hope you've enjoyed the little, excuse me, I hope you've enjoyed the little chat about the um, the two before for 12. I've absolutely thoroughly enjoyed doing it. Mm, yeah, great. It's great fun. And of course, we didn't want an engine. I had to figure out some story. I wasn't clever enough to put these. It would have been nice to put these as a V8, wouldn't it? But mm, I'm not that good. I, I didn't really want to ruin it. So I decided to call it a parallel eight. And then I decided th uh, to use imagination and enthusiasm. So it goes as fast as you want it to go. And it goes as fast as you imagine it might go. Yeah, no limits. So anyway, <laughs> that's my little 4x2, 2 before but 12 uh, little chat. And I think I've finished it now. I think... Um, Debbie's painted the middle look and painted the, the go faster split pin and painted the roll bar, painted the lights. So where do you stop? How do you go? You know, so anyway, that's my little um, Scoutcrafter Challenge car chat. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it's uh, he showed you. Did you wonder where all the bits came from? Mm -hmm. Obviously, all the bits came from my uh, huge store of uh, nuts and bolts.